Tesla's full self-driving autonomous vehicle program. Is it the future of vehicle transport or just some AI pipe dream? The answer seems to depend on who you ask, and there are people on both sides making arguments with significantly more legit credentials than I've got. So what we're going to be doing today is breaking down the key pillars of what Tesla is up to right now when it comes to autonomy and trying to figure out how this whole thing works. We're talking about the FSD beta, the AI dojo, and how autonomy is stacking up as a business model. Hey Elonites, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. So just to clarify, right off the bat, I did not purchase full self-driving with my Tesla. I'm not invested in the system right now, and that might change in the future. But for now, I'm just sticking with regular autopilot, and that's still pretty amazing. So most people are probably aware that Tesla offers two tiers of driver assist software. There is autopilot that comes installed on every Tesla that is currently sold. In the past, there were upgrade schemes with this, but now there is just one standard autopilot for all vehicles. Then there is full self-driving. As of right now, that is a $10,000 US upgrade fee either when you purchase the car or it can be added on later very easily with a simple software update. Neither of these features really do what the name might lead you to believe, not at this moment at least. Autopilot is basically a blanket name for adaptive cruise control, lane keep, and collision avoidance, while full self-driving does allow the car to drive itself in certain limited circumstances, but it's never fully autonomous in any situation. This can lead people to question why anyone would pay $10,000 for a feature that doesn't even live up to its own name. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Paying for full self-driving has so far been more like an investment in the future than it is purchasing an immediate product. More like buying into the idea of autonomy than actually buying a self-driving car. But finally, in 2021, it looks like those investments are about to start paying off. We know that the next major development in full self-driving is coming very soon. It's been in the beta testing phase since December of 2020 for a very limited pool of Tesla employees and close friends of the company, like Tesla owners clubs. What makes the new version of FSD special is that it allows the cars to navigate autonomously on all roads, not just freeways. And the feature is called auto steer on city streets. And this is the first opportunity that Tesla owners have had to experience a car that will actually navigate intersections and make turns without any input from the driver. There are now dozens, maybe hundreds of hours of video out there of these vehicles driving autonomously through city streets, mostly in the San Francisco Bay area of California and some of the situations that Autopilot is able to handle are amazing. It can navigate some busy intersections that would make the average person nervous. Then there are other situations where the car decides to do something weird and the driver has to intervene to prevent a catastrophe. And that's why Tesla and Elon Musk have been stressing that this is just a test version of the update, not the real thing. And it only rolled out to a small pool of about 1,000 trusted drivers. The number of beta testers is currently expanding to around 2,000 people, but they are at the same time removing certain testers who have not been paying close enough attention to the car as it moves through the city. Tesla is actually spying on their test drivers through the car's interior camera, and if anyone is checking their phone or trying to nap while the car is driving, then uh, you're out of the beta. So far, fortunately, there have been no accidents associated with this new testing phase and Tesla wants to keep it that way. It's easy for Tesla critics to look at this need for driver interventions and say that's it. That's proof the system doesn't work, it's not possible. But in reality, the interventions are the most important part of the entire process. We're literally teaching these cars how to drive themselves. The easiest way to think about it is just picture a full self-driving beta car as a 16-year-old kid in driver's ed. They know the rules of the road, they understand the world around them, but they are still going to make mistakes while driving because they lack experience 
experience. That's why they have an instructor with an extra set of pedals to help them out when they get in trouble. FSD cars are in the same boat. They need that human driver to make corrections if they get into an unfamiliar situation and make a wrong decision. It's through the mistakes that the system learns new scenarios. Every time that a driver makes an intervention during an FSD session, the car will take every bit of information it recorded during the incident and send it back to Tesla's HQ for analysis. It's basically the car saying, hey, I made a mistake here, what went wrong? Back at Tesla, there are probably thousands of people who are receiving these data packets from the cars and going through the video files frame by frame and labeling everything that the car saw. Most of the time, when a self-driving Tesla makes a mistake, it's because the car didn't recognize an important element or it confused one thing for another. That's where the labeling comes in. Maybe the car saw a weird curb design that hadn't been labeled as a curb before. Maybe the car didn't recognize a stop sign because it was bent over and Tesla still needed more labels for different kinds of bent signs. All of this new information created at Tesla then gets fed back into the vehicle's self-driving computer with every software update usually once a week. Eventually, the label catalog will get so deep that a car can recognize any stop sign, no matter which way it's bent over. By the way, if you're enjoying the video today, please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Subscribe if you're not already. That all really helps us to reach new people with our content. Now, the human element is still a big limitation on this whole process. One person can only label a certain number of bent signs a day. And there is obviously much more to it than just labeling signs and curbs. Tesla programmers are assigning weights to every object that will help the car prioritize and make predictions about what everything in their space is going to do. For example, an adult, a toddler, and a dog are different kinds of pedestrians that might be crossing the street, and they will all behave in completely unique ways. Tesla needs their cars to learn those kinds of differences so they can make smarter calculations when they choose a path. Basically, your self-driving Tesla is always trying to find the path that has the lowest probability of collision based on the objects it can see and the labels and weights assigned to those objects. This is a human-assisted machine learning, which is amazing, but it's also slow to progress. We're not going to hit level five autonomy with zero driver interventions at the pace we are moving right now, at least not on the timeline that we need to make this all profitable. The only way to accelerate is to shift more of the labor from humans over to machines. And that's where we enter Dojo. Now, nobody short of Elon Musk and the top level of Tesla engineers really knows what this system does exactly. But Elon has told us that Dojo is the fastest AI training supercomputer by an order of magnitude. In other words, at least 10 times faster than any other machine learning system in existence. I think that essentially what Dojo is going to be able to do is take information from one frame or one clip of human labeled video and then extrapolate that out to hundreds or thousands of similar frames and clips it receives from the cars. Then with all of the self-driving computers in the cars feeding their information straight into Dojo and Dojo performing super fast analysis and machine learning, then Dojo could be firing out daily software updates to the fleet instead of just once per week from the human programmers which would obviously speed this process up. Now we don't know when exactly Dojo will start operating, but it should happen soon. It's probably reasonable to say that Dojo becoming operational will coincide with the wider release of the new FSD features. So not only will auto steer on city streets be added for all full self-driving purchasers this year, but there will also be the launch of a subscription-based service for self-driving as well. So this technology won't be exclusive to people who drop the six or eight or 10,000 extra dollars. It will be open to any Tesla owner who is willing to pay a couple hundred bucks a month to try it out. At that point, there will be way, and I mean way more data packets coming in from the cars to Tesla HQ. And at that point, they will absolutely need Dojo to have any chance at optimizing all of this new information. Another quick interruption to invite you all to subscribe to our weekly Tesla Space newsletter. We deliver all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to sign up is in the description below. It's the teslaspace.com. 
So by this point, you've probably seen a bunch of articles from so-called news outlets about how Cadillac Super Cruise is better than Autopilot, or how Honda beat Tesla to level three autonomy, or Waymo beat Tesla to robo taxis. And this is basically all information that's put out by people who don't understand what's going on here. And I don't blame them for that. Really, it took me hours of research just to gain a basic understanding of how Tesla autonomy works so that I could make this video. It's a very, very deep hole. But what I have come to understand, and hopefully you've picked up as well, is that no one else is even close to where Tesla is right now when it comes to autonomous vehicles. No other company is even talking about machine learning and AI supercomputers. They're all still hung up on LiDAR and HD mapping as a crutch. A Cadillac can only do super cruise on roads that GM has already gone and mapped out ahead of time. It's like Google Street View, you can only see places where the truck has gone before. Waymo is even worse. Their robo cabs only work in one particular section of one city in Arizona. Plus they look ridiculous. LiDAR alone can never work as well as cameras because the LiDAR can only detect an object's shape, size, and distance. It's kind of like walking around in a dark room. You can use your hands to find walls and obstacles before you walk into them, but you can't see and understand your environment. Then there is this autonomous Honda technology. Now the only situation where Honda can self-drive is through traffic jams on the freeway. And that feature is only available on one model, the Legend sedan, which retails for 100,000 US dollars and is limited to a production run of 100 cars. It's kind of a joke really, like no reasonable person is paying 100 grand for a Honda, no matter what it does. And all of this is the reason why people like ARK Invest have decided that Tesla is the only company with a reasonable chance of actually launching an autonomous robo taxi network. The network can roll out anytime, anywhere in the world with a simple over the air software update. And the more time the cars spend self-driving, the more information they feed into Dojo and the better the system becomes. As a business model, this keeps their overhead incredibly low. Again, to compare this with Waymo, in order for Waymo to expand into a new city, they would need to complete HD mapping of every street in that city, and then they would need to continually redo that procedure on a regular basis to account for any changes that might occur over time. That's going to come at a significant extra cost. And that's not to say that Tesla's supercomputers would be cheap, but they don't have to go out and drive around all day. If we're looking at the long game for this, the robo taxi could become so successful in the future that Tesla no longer sells cars as a product. Think about that. No more car ownership, only cars as a service based model. You summon a Tesla when you need it. It takes you to a destination. You hop out and the car goes on its way to the next person. It's a significantly more profitable business model than making cars to sell them at retail. For the consumer, it would be a hard adjustment for sure. People take pride in owning a car. There is a sense of freedom that would be lost in a world of autonomy. But on the whole, is this the better, safer, more prosperous direction for society to take? I don't know. That's the big question with no easy answer. And I'd love to read your thoughts on the subject. So please leave your ideas in the comment section below. I always really enjoy going through them. Quick reminder to sign up for our newsletter for more Tesla news and speculation. There's again, a link down below. Also, if you're interested in Bitcoin, check out our partners at BlockFi to invest your cryptocurrency. Use our link in the description to receive $250 in free Bitcoin when you sign up. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.